Welcome to TT Boy TV. Today we have a crazy topic we're going to talk about. Really not that crazy, but we have an all-star cast. We have, next in seniority is Mr. Marcus. How you doing? He started in 94. He's got 26 years of knowledge of the adult business. Next, I think, is Lex, or is it Mike? Who's got next seniority? I think it's me. Mm -hmm. So Mike John. Yeah. Very well-known director. For what year? Producer. How many, come in? How many years? Oh, man. It's still, I think it was like 90. When, when did you come in? I, I came 90, in in January 98. Yeah, so I was when probably I first 96. 96. 96. So 24 years of knowledge, part of the business. And yours truly, 31 years. Wow. So together we have almost over 100 years. Yeah, up to 100, right? Over 100, 100 years of information. Over. Anyways, we're going to talk about why the AVN magazine, the biggest and oldest adult news source, has changed their ideas of having interracial awards and Latin or ethnic awards, and they got rid of them all. We want to understand why did they do this? What is the mindset? And we're going to get all this information from the pros. All of us are pros. Anyways, all right. <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to let you guys know. And I think, Mark, as you know, for sure. And you guys probably are here too, but I know the Avian Magazine since, you know, 88, 89. And there was no such interracial awards. No Latin awards, no nothing awards. It was pretty basic. So I thought they came around around 2000, 2001, if my memory serves me correct. Can you, you remember Marcus or Lex oh, or Mike? Uh, Inter Ur Urban Nixon Award? Or? Well, no, no, interracial, awards for <laughs> oh, interracial. When they, yeah, when they started. I think when you, when you speak of like the early days, it was all features. Mm -hmm. Whereas when Gonzo hit, then it soon turned into all these different genres, whether it be swallowing, big tits, interracial, anal. But, but it but took time in my memory before interracial became there. Interracial, in, from what I remember, please correct me if I'm wrong. Right. Please. That I can't remember interracial being anywhere until about the 2000s. Mm. And I thought there was already some gonzo ideas, like you're saying, before interracial came into play. Well, well, I would say that, um, to keep perfect example, my first direct, my directorial debut was a movie called, a movie called Balls Deep. Uh, with Anabolic, in that one Gonzo movie of the year 2000, which would have meant that having directed and produced that in 99, uh, just so then that almost verifies what you said. Of course, we might be needed to be corrected, but that means in circa 1999, there had not been an independent interest no category, <clears throat> just Gonzo, because that same title would have probably won Best Interracial Release if there had been an interracial category in the year 2000. Yeah, maybe in up your up your ass. Might have got got nominated mm -hmm. for something. Were we doing that before? Well, we well, were doing well, that before. Sean had it before, and then I got before it. Before you helmed it. Yeah, for the three of us that were doing it, right? Yeah, but oh, yeah. Right, right. you know, but at that point, was it just Gonzo or was it that designation as a generation? I don't think personally it was the 2002, 2003. But Marcus, well, you kind I, of no, you know, I was my. My experience with interracial, I mean, I remember, I remember 90, 95, 96, we were shooting, because I was working with Vivid, and Vivid was like my introduction to all the AVN stuff. But I just remember, like, we were, <laughs> we were trying to shoot, like, The World's Luckiest. And The World's Luckiest was a reverse gangbang. And this was in 96, 97. And I just No, no, it was after that, because I was already in. Yeah. Yeah. 98? Yeah, I remember uh, the It might have been 99. I, I'm going to have to butt in here for one second. The reason why they came up with that idea, one of the reasons why, mm -hmm. I think the main reason, is because Jim Holiday put me with 30 girls, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And John Doe saw that and he said, I think he said, I need to do it. I'll do me, right? I think. Right. And so they, he brought it to Steve and, right. and Marcy, you know, right, right, right. attention. Well, they, they did it, 100, 101 girls. Well, mine wasn't even supposed to be an iteration. It was supposed to be an all-black reverse gangbang. But they couldn't find 101 yeah. black girls. They got up to 
30. 33 to be exact. At that, at that moment. At that moment, they had 33 girls. And then it was like, well, I remember the conversation. We're going to bring in some white girls. And I was like, cool. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, cool. They had to bring in a lot, though, because you they did had to bring in, Yeah, and... yeah we, had, we did 101. But but they, I guess we had, you know, that was 66 or 67 girls. 60, no, 60. Well, 33, 67. Yeah, 67. No, no, 68, 67. 68. We need to go back to school. Right, right, right. Got to go back to school. <laughs> 68 girls, but we brought in more black girls, but there was a, that, I mean, because I think interracial was like something that people were saying, I don't know, you know, but there was, the door was open with Shawn Michaels. For me, Shawn Michaels was like the predecessor. Shawn Michaels led the way. Like girls wanted to work with him. Yeah. And they hadn't, you know, they hadn't done interracial before, but they wanted to work with him. So then that started the, the movement of interracial starting to be something that girls are now accepting, open their mind to. Producers were sitting around saying, okay, cool, let's shoot it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so then, you know. But more as a, as a presentation of a natural thing, which is opposites attract. So as opposed to a lot of the ways it's been presented previously and even throughout that entire time, mm -hmm. right? I mean, like we were just shooting sex. So if I'm shooting a movie, like there were some movies, it's definitely an interracial movie, okay. But a lot of the movies, it's just about attraction, right? Right, and then chemistry. from that chemistry and attraction, you go, hey, maybe I should do a line like this. These, this is going off here. These, mm -hmm. look at this. Right. Look at this fire. Look at what's happening here. Right. And so that's what it always was to me. Was just and visually, you know, you kind of. I mean, I get off on it. I, 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 I like the contrast. I remember. I'm not sure if it was you that said that, but. Somebody I was talking to that was a performer, and it was like, yeah, I like the contrast. And it was like nice to hear it come out of somebody else's mouth. It was like, get off on the, you know, the skin color, the, the contrast, the, the taboo of it. You know what I mean? You used to always say, can you feel the color? Can you feel the color? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's go, let's go back to the AVN. So, you know, for me, I thought the AVN, winning an AVN award, meant something and it was you know the they had all it had the top prestige of all the organizations in my opinion right so winning the award you know meant the most the avn award so people don't know that the avn is the top in case you don't know the adult video news is the top of the top for the award ceremonies and have been for the last 30 odd years yeah well we'd be remiss if not mentioning that xbiz magazine has also made itself a present right but XBiz and there was XRCO, who I liked XRCO, and then there was Fox Awards. Well, just in terms of magazines, yeah, publications, okay. although XRCO probably focuses more a little bit more on the business side of it than the, the content mm -hmm. side. So XBiz or XRCO? Right. X XBiz is more yeah, commercial, is, yeah. but, AVN is more talent oriented. You know? Yeah, but AVN is the one we're talking about. Well, yeah. They've they, made they, this been, point. Yeah, they've been doing it the longest, they've been doing it the most consistently. And the, I just want people to know for sure, you know? Not everybody knows the adult video news, AVN Magazine, has been around 35 years or, or yeah. more, since 86. So anyways, that's what we're talking about, their choice in to take away all the interracial and Latin ethnic awards out of their award ceremonies, so on. Right. So let's, you know, this is kind of like the beginning, so I want to know, let's go, Lex, mm -hmm. what does it feel like to win an AVN award? Uh, well, to win, I guess it's, it's, um, it's nice to be acknowledged, you know, and most of the performers that win, um, know that it's an accolade that's comparable to an Oscar in terms of this weight and magnitude within our industry. Unfortunately, most, most performers that win an award are, are unable to monetize having won an award. I mean, how do you commercialize? being called onto the stage and most people aren't able to commercialize that. So it's really only the studio that owns the movie that that award was generated from that materially benefit from it. Now, for me personally, I was able to increase my pay rate per scene based on as my ascension through winning awards and other things. But um, for me, being nominated was equally important because, you know, if they can only nominate 10 people, and then on the final night, it will be down to nine people for the nomination. And then you're like, okay, well, look, I'm glad I was just one of five people that 
Got it's shooting thousand, all year. You know what I'm saying? Thousands of thousands of scenes, of anal scenes, and I'm the last nominee. So if I won, it was cool and it was appreciated. Um, but for me, it got to the point where I felt that I shouldn't be the only person, uh, certainly not the only black person that was actually winning on a regular, consistent basis. I felt that that over the years, I never felt like I never felt 100. percent I always felt comfortable in my winnings. I felt disappointed in the lack of recognition for other black male and female performers and that I shouldn't have been the only one. I will add to that and say that I've seen that happen before, not just with black, but with performers. It seems like they might have psychologically, whoever decides to vote in, you know, whoever votes, Mm -hmm. have their favorites. And go to their favorites and be biased. That's what I've kind of seen more in my time. Anyways, Marcus, no. add on that. Well, I don't know. Every time I won an award, I was never around to get it. <laughs> so it's kind of like I don't know what the feeling is like. <laughs> uh, so it was always it was always lost on me, you know. Uh, I think I always, you know, I mean, because I was I I went to every award show for the past twenty five years. So I've been somewhere in the room. So any time that we were acknowledged, you know, brothers in the business, whether it was individual or as a company or as a movie, it was like, it was like for me, it was like a win. It was like, good, we got acknowledgement. Good, we're being mentioned. Good, we're on, we're on it. But then you also see the politics play into it, too. The company who spent the most money on the marketing or advertised the most, who had the most performers involved in the show, sometimes they would get the showcase. Sure. For sure. You know what I mean? And you'd feel kind of like you'd feel that rub. So it was like it was like a what are they? Uh double edged sword. You'd win, but at the same time it'd be the politics that came with it too. Yeah. You know what I mean? So but I mean but your caliber of performance, your consistency of performance, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Was just was always I don't know if it was justifies the right word, but you would validate it. Right. Well, it. quite honestly, I felt, not to cut you off, but I felt actually better or more excited about the movies I won as a director as opposed to as a performer. Mm-hmm. The ones as a director were the ones I really felt like, wow, like really? I really enjoyed having won that. The performer right. thing was kind of like, you know, but I, I just felt better about the directorial ones because the directorial ones were the ones that I wasn't necessarily supposed to win. See what I'm saying? Because, you know... There's very, very few people, you know, and we're all directors here, but we know that not many people get a chance to receive budgets. Right. So whether I was, it was a budget for someone else or my own budget, if I directed it and it won something, I felt greater pride for having won a directorial award. I you think know, both um, of us were pretty lucky to have <clears throat> freedom as far as what we shot. Because mm-hmm. like Anabolic, they'd give us a budget and we were free oh, to do yeah. what we wanted. Yeah. And then from there on out, it was pretty much ownership, right? So but then again, though, remember the standard that was necessary yeah. for us to maintain. Yeah, of course. And yeah. receive yeah, an anabolic exactly. budget. That's an additional, an additional pressure that other studios didn't inflict. Because if you're not a top company, how much weight can you make your directors feel? But if you're a top company and you, you know, you find, you know, give money to someone there's a lot of pressure on them to, to maintain the, the, the caliber of production. Yeah. I'm going to have to, you know, so it's, you worked hard, Lex, and I saw you do some great work. Yeah. But maybe you became a favorite in the people's eyes. You know what I mean? Because this is why you kept the, winning the awards. Consume, nah, here's, no, no, the voters. Well, well here's not. Nah, you, you said you won so many awards. Shawn well, Michaels was good, too. Well, no, 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 no. Got to let's differentiate. Are we talking male performer of the year? Or are we talking male performer. generalized I'm, awards? No, I'm talking about generalized male performer, all of it. Well, well let's, separate the, let's separate male performers from all the other awards. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because... because um, there are certain machinations that are at play in all other awards, but perhaps in the, in the male and female performer awards, I think there there can be um, a definable method to the to the uh, to that madness, and you know, so I have explanations for that in which I think are 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 at the very least um, conceivable as being you know particularly appropriate for the male performer. For, for male or female performance, you know. <clears throat> right. Now, you want me to explain it? Sure. In short order, I feel that 
um, the male and female performers um, that win, it's a, it's really pointing to the equity investment that the industry as a business right. has taken to a particular individual. Now, what I mean by that is this. If you're an individual that is helming or is the top drawer for a female, if a female is the top drawer for a particular studio in any number of their movies, and that number of movies that she is responsible for being the, the primary proponent thereof, if there's whoever has the most of those positions, that deserves to be the female performer. For the guys, it's the guy who is who perhaps in that year may have been the greatest asset to the greatest number of studios. So in particular, one of the years that I won, um, I was a very big part of the interracial productions for quite a few companies right, right. for those years, albeit the primary draw as an interracial, the premise of movie being interracial, for the most part, I was one of the primary draws, and thus I was a selling point. So if you're a selling point, if you're, if you're a seller, when he's speaking to a buyer, if he's using your name as a part of the cast, yeah. that means you're an integral, part, an integral part of the equity capacity of this movie. See what I'm saying? The money-making vehicle of this movie, and you're a driver of such. Well, you, like you have, yeah. Tito, well, you have been a part of some of, of, of all the, the biggest companies in the world because you got a chance to work for not only um, white on white, but interracial. So you always were an equity, you know, there was an equity investment in you as a brand by the industry. Yeah, so, well, you know, I, I agree with you a lot on that. But it's such a windy, slippery road, you know what I mean? Because well, you know, Peter North is a huge, huge piece of equity. Yeah. I mean, you know, people, yeah. they got to recognize, you say Peter North's name, right? Today still, right. Peter North. People that yeah. don't even really watch porn know they, Peter They North. know Peter North. And he never won Performer of the I Year. Thought he, he didn't, I thought he won once twice. Never won Performer of the Year. And they, he hardly won any sex scenes, but he did great sex scenes. So while you say it is true, but it is a slippery, blind a road right. with blind spots, you know right. what I mean? And listening to you, it made me think. Well, if I would have, if I would have took that approach, mm -hmm. you know, and that thinking, I probably would have done better. <laughs> I probably would have <laughs> won. I would have, you know, I would have won probably more awards. Oh, oh, you know, who else didn't win Performer of the Year? Who, you know, you know, is a great performer, did great work. It was Nacho? Davis. Mm -hmm. Mark Davis, Nacho. Mark Davis worked year in, year out. Nacho did unbelievable scenes. Yeah. So athletic, so wild, yeah. so great. Come on. It's yep. fucking a crazy yeah. road, right? Yeah. Everhart. Well, well, here's the man. In terms of Nacho now, you know, Nacho is yeah, arguably. He was always nominated. You know, Nacho is arguably <laughs> the, the you know, in, 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 in fable and in modern thought, Nacho is regarded as possibly the second greatest performer in history, second only to Rocco. To Rocco. Now, obviously a protege of Rocco that he was. But did he suffer from the fact that as a European performer, he was always dubbed the European performer nominations for European performer. If you, if, you, if you juxtapose his position versus Steve Holmes, who's been a great performer for years, or Manuel Ferrar, who's been a great performer for years, all these guys were at a certain point, became just another American performer, yet they were French and German, respectively. Right, Not right, just right. being Spanish. You know what I'm saying? So he, they was always regarded as the Spanish performer that would come over here and wreck shop. But the consumership knew, they, they knew that the, how great Nacho was. Right. I mean, I... I and they I, gave... Or Rocco would always get the foreign... foreign they would go foreign. Yeah, the foreign. It would go to Rocco all the time. Awards. And then thereby, Nacho would get... Would, who deserved it. The thing about Nacho spawned Tony Rivas yeah. as well. And how yeah. many other guys from Spain that came over? Fucking no, no, no. Well, I mean, you know, that, that the trilogy, you know, you know Manuel, guys, yeah. Marcus, Supri, you know, all the European yeah. guys that fell from the Rocco tree. You know, and that probably was intimidating yeah. to Mike John because Mike John at some point wanted to break the third wall, right? What's that? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, no, that's where the POV comes from. There's no intimidation. You just walk right around there. <laughs> but well, you know POVs? You do. Oh, yeah. but, but back to, back to, I guess, our subject. But yeah, yeah you know, that, I got you. <laughs> back to our subject, which is we're here today to pretty much understand why. You know, because this is the whole movement. Yeah. 
this whole movement, Avian, is followed now because of George Floyd. So I guess we want to don't want to go off track. We yeah. want to go down to nitty gritty. Yeah. Why? All of a sudden, you know, the things change. And we want to yeah. talk a little bit about the history. because We've been here a long yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the people out there might not know, yeah. but there's 100 years or 30-something years, yeah. you know, yeah. of combined time. Yeah, right. of wow. time. Look. So wh what is it? And also, f real quick, Mike, yeah. what does it feel like when an avian word? I don't want to, you know, let you slide by. I, I would say about the same as Lex. You know, it's, it's, it's nice to be recognized when you understand how many movies are out there. How many and and there's a lot of competition, you know. So uh, like I've won Gonzo of the Year, at POV of the Year, different things like that. And it's great. You director know? of the Year, or no? No. Okay. Well, well, if if you if a title he directed means. Oh, 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 you mean direct? Oh, yeah. Well, you went yeah, for direct, directing direct a title, so Gonzo of the Year. Yeah. One time. Remember, they just now, as of the last couple of years, before used to use one director, or now they have feature or Gonzo. Uh huh. They, you know, yeah, right, right, right. Finally. Uh, yeah. Over the last couple of years. And I want to just, because one point you said, mm -hmm. you know, interested me. So I just, even though we want to go that direction back to where we're talking about, I want to put you on a spot and say, so are you saying that you would rather win best director than performer of the year? Um, mm, no, no. I would rather have won my performers of the year awards. Um, but in terms of, for me, I was, there was greater satisfaction. For me, as a person, as yeah, person, as when it was a award that I directed, and 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, we're in porno. We're performers, you know, real real performers. We all we both did thousands of movies. Yeah. All three of us did thousands of movies as performers. Yeah. Right, us three. Mike is a producer, did some POV, but you're a director mainly, right? That's right. And right. The, the greatest videographer. Ever. The style Ever. that people shoot Gonzo now is actually originated by Mike Johnson. Okay. Well, of course, your style as well. You're one of the founders of the Gonzo shooting style as well. Yeah, way back, yeah. yeah. But, um, so the point is, for me, the performer of the year, you know, as yeah. men, you know, as old school men, right? Yeah. Like the, the way I think, old rough and tough guys, men. Performer of the year is the top of the, the tier for me. Yeah. Best actor... If I want to be best yeah. actor, I go to Hollywood and yeah. get an Oscar. You get best actor, forget it. Right. But for me, that's the top of the top. Yeah, and ABN, Performer of the Year, seems like the top. Yeah. You agree? I, well, I, I like the acting. So huh? I would love to have, you know, I, I like that. I actually won an award for the acting. You know, we did some features. We did some uh, features. Uh, Racial <laughs> tension. That one. Yeah, we did some great so, acting in that. So you'd rather be the I like actor? The acting. I mean, you know, for me, I was like, when I got into it, the business. I love the fact that we were filming and we had a, we had a location to go to, and you know there was a, a flimsy script to follow. But you know, <laughs> make but, it up right there on the spot. <laughs> okay, say this. No, but I'm with you. I was in those obviously all those right, features. Right. But and I love the acting. It was fun. But performer of the year? No, come on. No, like you said, it's 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 the it's like I hadn't thought of it like well, that. I hadn't I, thought I, of I that. Okay, let me let me clarify. Uh, award represents. The greatest athletic achievement of the year. It is an athletic. Myself. It is beyond athletic. sports awards, because if you're going to go out there and lay it all on the line, which is what performing is, that's that 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 hits at the heart of somebody's ego. They're 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 doing it all. If you go out there and you miss a couple baskets or whatever, how 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 psychologically bad can that affect you? I'm not a basketball player. I don't know. But when I look at the male performer career path, whatever it is, and what it takes to pull that off day in, Consistent. day out, right. Right. all these situations, right. you can't fail, you're only as good as your last scene, and you <laughs> right. do all that and you wind right. up being the best at it, that shit blows my mind. Mm -hmm. Far more mind control, physical control, yeah. and discipline. Able, discipline than people could ever possibly right. imagine. Right. Discipline is a huge part of it. Yeah, it's it, there's no there's no comparing it in my mind, and I I've seen so much of it. Then it, then I look at regular other activities, and it is it is an athletic event, and I just can't draw a comparison. What you know, it's like okay, you try to do that, <laughs> right. right? If I, I if I practice enough, or a regular guy practice yeah. enough, he can make a bunch of baskets, yeah. or he can hit a baseball. But you you cannot practice your way into having the ability to wind up that good at performing, especially. Without any help. Right, right. right. 
Without, with, the, with the help today, it's a whole different world. But without the help, pre, especially in yeah. our time, yeah, right, right. the beginning of our time, especially my way back in my time, was there's no even thought, you know what I mean? But then I, that's really what you're talking about. On talk, exactly, exactly. Well, and that's how I feel about performing the year. It's great. Well, I, before we move further, I would just like to say, as as winning award as a director, the reason why it meant more to me, and I'll be, I'll, just, I'll elaborate a little more on it. Um, it's kind of like if you're a, a black quarterback. Okay, first of all, you're not. They, they're going to if you go you transition from college to pros. A lot of the bit the top black quarterbacks were asked are are asked to train, change positions to go into the NFL. You're a quarterback your whole life, and they ask you to be a wide receiver. You're, or ask you to be a running back or a defensive back. You're like, no, no, I'm a quarterback. I'm going to stay a quarterback, draft me as a quarterback. Well, my other thing, the reason why I use that as an illustration is because I, as a performer, as a BBC interracial performer, I'm supposed to just be a fuck puppet. Now, to be a director, the person who's helming that particular production, that's not supposed to be... To be me. So for me to do well on the other side of the camera, the other side of the desk meant that I had accomplished more than winning for a scene. I understand what you're saying. I'm giving you a pound. Yeah. Because <laughs> a lot of times the people don't think of you more than that. Yeah. That you can. Yeah. yeah. And that's so, why you said a black quarterback. People don't think a black quarterback mm -hmm. can handle the pressure of running an offense. Yeah. Or you know, or, you know, exercising under pressure. Yeah. So that's why it meant more to me to be acknowledged as a director because it's like, okay, you know, yeah, I have a budget. Um, I'm competing against everyone, and um, and we got a good product out. Yeah. No, you know, for sure, I understand what you're saying, yeah. and especially I understand because in my time. A lot of times, these guys would write reviews about me. You might not have seen them, Marcus, but I used to read them all. <laughs> oh, TT's just a uh, Neanderthal. Oh, he just, you know, uh, give him some drugs, slow, calm him down. Blah, 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 blah. He's a moron. But, you know, I never failed. And yeah. my focus was, you know, so strong. And the people just took it for granted. That was just a machine. Yeah, but the consumers didn't. The consumers, yeah, the like, consumers, you were thrilled. Yeah. I mean, like, you, yeah. you the, know, it, you, the guy, The guy watching at home is like, we can count on yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Reliable. I think well, one, yeah. of my one thing that helped me a lot is never taking that for granted. Yeah. Mm. Like, I would always talk to the male performer, the performers, but the guy would say, hey, what about, you know, where do you want to right, do it? Right, right. You were always, would, yeah, yeah. I'd be like, yeah. what do we, you know, what we do you think? Let's, golden like that. What do you, what do we, yeah. what do you need? And that's, that's just simply for not taking that for granted. Like, or as a consumer. No matter how good a guy yeah. was at it, I'd still assume that's some hard-ass shit yeah. that guy's pulling off well, right there. Smart people will understand that, you know, because you don't work with girls you like every day. No. It's just the way it is, you know what I mean? Not everybody likes everybody. Yeah. But what, what I'm just agreeing with you is mm -hmm. because on the flip side, you know, not all performers like me or whoever, you know, are stupid, <laughs> right? They have brains, yeah. and I proved it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I proved it at a high level. Cause, so I understand what you're saying. Because I left and I said, well, I stopped performing. You know, I went and did, you know, distribution, direction, and all that. You know, because I, you know, I, I made a lot, 1,600 tiles, all that stuff. Yeah, no, but so I understand you what you're were, saying. You were business focused and you know, opportunities came your way where you were able to. Well, I kind of ground them, you know, made them happen. Because, right. you know, anyways. So I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah. Because it's a pride thing. Yeah. The... Um, how, what does it mean to you? How do you feel about AVN taking interracial and ethnic Latin out of the award ceremony and just kind of blending it together as one? So let's go, Marcus. Well, I think the word I found was misguided because then it was like, it, it's coming out of a situation where, you know, Listen, the retailers and the consumer are going to have the last say. The consumer, really. And I think they're going to be looking for specific titles. They, they, we've conditioned them to look for these titles, to think of the, these movies in, in these terms, in these themes. And so I, I just feel like it's like a knee-jerk reaction. Like, oh, everybody else is doing it, so we're going to do it too. You know, and the person, personally, the person who wrote, wrote it is questionable. He has his own 
views and, and issues when it comes to race. So for him to be, you know, representing, you know, AVN, which we established means something because it was, it's been around. It's, 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 it's a place where all of us kind of, it's an umbrella that we kind of all kind of work under and we come together under, you know, we, we read the reviews. It's a, it's a business. It's a, it's a uh, trade organization. So, you know, if you want to do the business, you want to market your product, you want people to know about it, you're going to use these themes and these ideas to, as taglines to get people to, you know, aware of what you just put your heart and soul into. So for Avian to come up with this and all this crap, it's like you, people have been approaching you for years trying to get you to change something, to be more inclusive, to be aware of how we were marketing these movies. I mean, I remember walking <laughs> in and I'm passing on. I remember walking into AVN about two years, two years ago, maybe three years ago, they war show, and I walk in there, and uh, Black had just worn something, and up on the screen on these, these you know, thirty feet high screens, there was two black men, you know, completely naked, just standing there with a black background, backdrop, and just all you see is just a black man, no girl. No girl, just the guy. And I feel like I walked into like an auction. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> That's what I felt as a black man. And, I was well, like, and this I, is a regular I, AVN? This is a regular AVN. Award. Are they naked or? Uh, I think so. I think well, they uh, and I was just kind of like, I was just blown away. I was just like, you hit, the shit has hit the fan. This is, this is not. I can't compete with that. I can't even do that. I'm not going to do that. That's not what we're here for. So I feel like the whole message and what we create and what we what we do was totally lost, gone. So that was that's that's when I realized that things had changed. Lex, no, Mike. Good. Mike, well, I, I don't. I I don't. I think it's misinformed. I think it's nervous. Uh, I think it's poorly thought out. Right, like. I don't think having different categories of awards is a reflection of racism. I think there's racism in the business in a lot of different forms. But I don't understand how you're not going to acknowledge what's actually happening on the screen. Here, so, here. What are we right. going to do? Say, and another great sex scene a hundred fucking times, and then like not point any of the nuances of that sex scene out. There's nothing wrong with interracial sex at all. Right. So then why get nervous? Why get distracted when the problem is something else? Right? right. That To me, I just think it's like, I'm reading this and I'm going, you know, he pointed out something before we started, which was nobody called him, nobody called you. Did anybody yeah. ask anybody your views that has your opinion, an, an right. actual opinion on this experience Expe I'm, especially somebody with a lot of experience right it, it doesn't matter how much you think you know we live in a divided society to some degree so even if you have white black friends whatever it is you don't have that experience you don't experience what a black person experiences if they walk into a store if they go to a certain part of town if they this that or the other as a white dude, I can go anywhere. I can do anything. Nobody's gonna, the cops, like, I don't give, I've been <laughs> fucked with by the cops, but like just the other night, my girl said, there's a curfew. My baby's acting up and my girl says, what are they gonna do? I'll just go walk them around the block or whatever and stops and goes, there it is right there. Right. Like I can take <laughs> for granted that I'm not, especially she's a white chick with a white baby in a stroller. They're not going to fuck with her. Mm -hmm. They're not They're going to ask fuck her, are with her. Are you okay? Yeah, are you okay, ma'am? You, you should go home. <laughs> or whatever. And she stops and she goes, that's white privilege right there. Yeah. So that, see, a lot of, most white people, I don't feel are racist at all, but they're nervous about racism. And because they're nervous about racism, they're afraid to even talk to a black person. Hey, what do you oh. feel? What do you think? What do you this? What do you that? They're afraid. Well, you see the nervousness so in, in driving around LA and all the boarded up they're nervous of they a nervous they, reaction. They, they don't know. So, so then all of a sudden, there's not going to be any awards about reality. Right? Mm, and yeah. there, and there, you, there you come nice full point. circle. But you, what, why? It, it's almost like saying then, then, then it is shameful to just make it go away. You know? 
That, so it's it, confusing. It's, it's to, fucking confusing. <laughs> but I would say that the only thing, I don't know who works at AVN, if they're white, black, Mexican, Jewish, Chinese, or whatever. I don't know. It doesn't that, matter. All that. <laughs> but no blacks. I would guess they're white based on that reaction because it's, it is, like I said, right. a nervous, uninformed reaction. Because I'm guessing if they were black, they wouldn't change it. I don't think black people are walking around pissed off that there's an interracial no. award at the AVN show. No, but I'm saying if the AVN was, was owned by a black person, well, yeah, then or, they probably wouldn't change it. Or involved in the decision making in the direction right. of, the, of, of the business. Go ahead. But that's a great, I love that. You know, the, the racism more comes down to questions or just standards. Like girls are asked, will you do interracial? That only means one thing, okay? Now, is a black girl ever asked if she'll do interracial? I've never heard of that. Could Marie Love or Jada Fire or any of those guys, girls, women come into the business and not fuck white guys? Well, I, That's racism <laughs> in the business. Right. Oh, so not the uh, reverse. You know the white guy like, I'm going to get some of that. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> For my movies, sometimes they wouldn't work with me. <laughs> the girl says that, no, I don't do white guys. But I'm Latin, baby. I don't care. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> I said, all right, no problem. Switch up. <laughs> I, really? It's, it's definitely not a... a, a well, Puerto that's Rican, part right? of the... Yeah, Puerto Rican, the, but they don't care. any agency's questioning, interracial. It's, yeah. an, it's a question. And they're not, they're, they're not asking about Puerto Rican guys or any other guy. They're not. It's about black guys. So, yeah. so And that's a one-way question. It's the only. It's only asked one way in one scenario, and that's it. So that, to me, you know, would be more part of it. And then a lot of depiction and a lot of attitude, like like he pointed out with Sean, no color lines with Sean Michaels' company motto, and that's who brought me in. That's where I learned. I I I grew up in Venice. My parents are Scandinavians. I've never had a racist thought. I'm not exposed to that kind of thinking or anything. So I just happened to meet Sean, and there was a very natural fit. And my exposure to interracial or whatever you want to call it was a very healthy one. It wasn't, there wasn't like uh, these movies, White Trash Horror, and the guys with watermelons and all this other mm -hmm. shit. And it's like, who, like, who the fuck? I can't even imagine showing up as a director and like, this is my idea. Like, what the fuck are you trying to do here? This is a jerk-off movie. This is about people at home wanting to masturbate to something that is extremely attractive to a lot of people, which is opposites attract, right? And instead, you guys got the 40 ounces out and the fucking watermelons and all this fucking shit. And it's like, wow, what right. does that have to do with anything? Being made in a porno. Well, I will add to that. I would, I would, you know, a lot of brothers do like 40s and. But that's not why they're in the movie. No, it's not. And the fact that they incorporate, I guess they're, I don't know if they're trying to, you know, include, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking is behind it because you're right. Well, sure. didn't you ever look at some of those ads back in the day? I mean, come on. It's like. No, I know. They were, they were definitely trying to send a message. Yeah. You know, and like I said, I'm aware of the sensitivity of it all. A lot of white people are sensitive, afraid of it. You know, whatever. So I don't, I don't, I know, I know, I don't know it. where my level is on the ignorance level, but I know I've been exposed to a lot more than most growing up in Venice, being around a lot of shit. So I think I'm pretty hopefully aware, you know, but mm -hmm. so like you say, well, a lot of guys like 40s. Well, I, you know, I do too. But, but like I say, it, it's being used you know. to depict a, a whole it's not stereotype. It's not like, hey, let's yeah. have some beer and shoot a porno. Right, right. It's, 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 it's to, it's to make it as stereotypical as possible and then throw a white girl in there. Yeah. And to me, that's to bring out the racist part of it or that kind of thinking. Yeah, right on point. Lex, your feelings on that question? <clears throat> well, I think first and foremost, I think it was like we said before, it was a knee jerk reaction. Um, in, in Avian as a magazine, if you look at the fact that they maybe considered what was happening in terms of right now, all corporations are coming forward with saying we are not, you know, racist. You know, we we you know we espouse, we conjoin with the Black Lives Matter movement. Right. 
And so I think that with the AVN in that knee-jerk reaction, uh, bearing in mind there is a reason why there was a knee-jerk reaction to what's happening. And somewhat, my, it has been suggested that George Floyd had did adult media mm -hmm. and that it might have been in distaste for AVN to have brought that out. And so they, they in a reflective type of positioning, they said we have to look at ourselves and realize that we perhaps have been racist, had racial, racial policies for the long term. And they decide to cancel interracial as a category. That's thusly our discussion here. The problem with that is um, it was a uh, 180 degree um, off target from what should have happened. Certainly enough, nothing was, I don't believe, I, many will agree that the system had not been flawed in terms of the designation of a genre right. as interracial. The disparity was in who were winning the awards across the board with Avian. So there, thereby, that was a problem, not in the, in the title of a genre. I think they missed the mark in eradicating a genre. Now, ipso facto, what that means is this. You will see the disappearance of the, the ethnic performer as viable for these major awards. Like you just the, spoke of like the financial side of it. Well, well, it isn't, uh, no, we can get to the fan side, but I'm, I'm, I'm strictly talking in terms of the disservice to performers will be such that they will be eradicated from consideration. Because what happens is the African-American and albeit the Latino you know, performer, the performer of color is limited to interracial or black on black. <clears throat> now, those limitations exclude them from most of the larger awards. So now, if you're going to eradicate the awards that they are most inclined to win, then how do they win in the other awards? So then you'll disappear. A perfect that's... example is this. If, if, if I compete for an award that's an interracial award, and then now that category no longer exists, and I was in no way being considered for any of the other awards that primarily go to white-on-white -white, uh, productions, then I'm totally eradicated from the playing field. Because now, because you felt that you're doing a service to the African American community by saying we won't be racist by using a title that is has a racist connotation, that's a misnomer. It does not have a racial connotation. It's just identifying what it is. It's exactly. It's just, a race. That's look. That's, you know what I'm saying? It's either word. Yeah. yeah so it's we, like it's we, not a bad, if we, you remove that yeah. from our from our viability in terms of award shows, then how do you how do you show appreciation for an, an ethnic performer at this point? But do you really think that people aren't changing production like oh shit there's no awards for us it's over i mean no. i no. think they're going to wind up at the end of the year going uh no it's almost like one of those a drunken text well if a you know, is I'm, I'm, I'm going to change like, 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 i send it and then talk, didn't think about it if they're specifically talking about eradicating the award for for the category I, for I, interracial, well, I think they're probably. talking. It was very. I think important. actually, what's going to well, happen is the no. press release what is very time? broad. Okay, yeah, it's like one percent of time. Okay. In, in terms of commercialization, here's the other thing too: is when you tell a studio, this is my problem. You t when you tell a studio that they cannot, you when you dictate to a studio how they have to put together their promotional campaign, that's a problem. So, Avian saying they will no longer print or carry promotional campaigns that use the term interracial, then now you're telling me my brand, your brand too, yeah. our brands as directors and producers, right? Uh -huh. That we have Black to change. Over here. Huh? I said black man over here. <laughs> I said our as in four right. way, right? So, right. okay. So that being said, everybody now has to look at how we promote our material. Let, let's get, let's go to the real. It almost has injury heart. to insult, right? Kind of, but let's go to the real heart of that. The beginning of that. Right, the beginning of that was only for one purpose, right? So they could get more ads, generate ads from the companies that became popular or making money shooting interracial or Latin or whatever. So they capitalize on those ideas. That way, the companies would advertise more. I don't get it. You say you're a company, right? Mm -hmm. You had a company, mm -hmm. right? I have, yeah. You have a company. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, shut my company down. You know, you're, you have a company, mm -hmm. and you have advertising dollars, right. right? 
So they need to get those advertising dollars. This is my opinion, right? Okay. And so how, how, what better of a way than to entice you to advertise than with, hey, we'll give you an award for interracial or black on black or, or whatever you know they've came up with because that's what's happened along the way. They're coming up with more ideas, in my opinion, to seduce you to advertise so they can make money. But let me hear your thoughts on that. Well, you made me think of something, and I totally forgot missed this when we were talking about when the interracial thing. Remember when uh, John Ashcroft, the uh, uh, guy on the came, uh, what was security, he was the uh, what do you call it, the uh, top, attorney top, general top, or attorney no? General. General. Yeah, you. top attorney general, you know, top lawyer of the of the country, and he was coming into office, and our industry did a knee jerk reaction. The whole entire industry did. Mm -hmm. They came out with the Ashcroft list. Or the Cambria list. Cambria list, yeah, and, 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 and all these things on there that they didn't want to see in the in the marketing and the promotion of adult material. And the last thing they saved it for last was no black men with white women. And you know, and, and it was like you know, no two men holding hands. They really listened to that one, didn't they? <laughs> Sky, sales went through the roof. So so when you mentioned it right now, and you were like, well, it's like maybe there's a you know a flip. It's like. Yeah, maybe they're like saying, "Oh, we don't, we don't, you know, don't do all that," but you know, do more of that. <laughs> well, the thing is, 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 what I'd like to know, and I don't know this, and so I would pose this as much as a question as a statement. Um, when this was being decided and discussed, was there anyone there that at least offered an opposing position? Because um, I think someone should have been like, hey, this is not <laughs> well, smart. I doubt it because it's very clear when you read it. Like yeah, if you're just calm yeah. and you're not nervous and you're thinking, and you're going, what, what, what? Like, it what? just yeah. seems very reactionary yeah. right. and very poorly thought out. And if you know this guy, Tony Rio, the CEO, who's, he put his name on I the saw you know, it's conflicting. Like my experience with this dude has not been like, you know, some, some guy who's all of a sudden had this epiphany and like, he's, <laughs> He's very uh, permanent in his views. Like, well, see, here's the thing, Matt. Let me ask you this: Do can we? Are we in a position where where we think that this will be a something better for the industry? Like, so say, right? You know what I'm saying? What does it change? What does it change? Now you just don't better? talk about. You yeah. Don't so say now a word. you're going to remove the strength of someone's whole promotional campaign, and then you're gonna you're gonna defund, if you will, or defraud or dis. No, you're going to disenfranchise a whole category of performer by eradicating the use of the, the, the specifications of interracial. Right. I hear you. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Steele. No doubt. No. I mean, you know, it's, 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 you know. No, I got it. Well, it's an interesting I can see, I can see point. The relation. If this is, you know, interesting, since we're going to be, all, you know, kind of divided, but not divided, now we're in one, it's, it's very, you know, kind of a, Strange dynamic. It's a so, lack of listening. Right. So, but if yeah. Latin, you know, yeah. and yeah. black and all ethnic is going to be taken out of the awards, mm -hmm. award ceremony, then <laughs> should lesbian be taken out? <laughs> you know, because if... Because that's a discriminatory thing against... Or the should the emergence of trans uh, yeah. be, be, you know... Yeah, like I, you know, I, I don't see it. it it's so, like you said, it's a knee jerk. It just doesn't, it's misguided. It doesn't make any sense because they're basically cutting off a very viable part of the industry saying, uh, we're not going to. Well, well, history has shown us that these same mistakes have happened. Yeah. History repeats itself. And I, I, don't think, I, don't think it's just, I don't think it's sincere. That's, that, that was my first thing when I read it. I was like, oh, this is not even sincere. There's no way that AVN can, can dictate what you know, 99% of the rest of the industry is going to do. They're going to, they're going to do what they want. They're actually going to maybe even take advantage. And we, we've gotten, if anything, I've heard more uh, dissension from what they're saying than anything. People are like, I, I don't subscribe to that. I don't think like that. Because I, I don't even think it applies. You know, it brings up, I think it brings up another discussion about sexuality and, and, and race. And in a way, unfairness. Because they're admitting to it. <laughs> you know, you have, pe human beings don't like unfair treatment, mm -hmm. right? And so the black community gets unfair treatment. 
they pay the same taxes, they're living in the same country under the same flag, and they don't get Using a fair the same deal. streets? Using the same streets, don't get a fair deal. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it in terms of the, the magnitude of the unfairness and the patience, like, <laughs> like nice. are you kidding me? <laughs> the White patience, people have no tantrums doubt, over brother. the tiniest fucking shit right. and feel their rights are being violated. Look at the other day when these guys go in that governor's mansion with guns and take over the governor's mansions and protest. Picture a bunch of black guys trying to do that. Well, it happened. The next day, the mayor um, hired a, uh, a black They came to the protector. Group. Yeah, they, they tried it. That's right. right, that's right. You know what I'm saying? But it's interesting what, to your point, if you look at the way the media handled, where Those guys one group were... is looked at as like, uh, <laughs> right. you know, and, like, the, and, the, and, the, and the other group was like, And like it's the ominous. reverse. Yeah. The like, guy's you know, protecting the mayor, mm -hmm. you know, but. Well, ominous in like, you know, like, but yeah. this is one of those other occasions of unfairness, mm -hmm. extreme unfairness, if we really want to get to the point of it, and nobody's been consulted. Well, well, well here's the thing, Matt. Like, nobody of color. You're going to take I mean. away. Yeah, I don't think he consulted it's, it's anybody. Not, right. <laughs> not even his mama. Mark, as you mentioned, you might know something about the inner workings of the AVN and mm -hmm. the owner. Mm -hmm. So you were kind of saying it a little bit, but what do you think? You know, you kind of said it's a knee jerk, but you know the guy a little bit, right? Tony? Well, you know what? I was going to ask you, too, because I, I didn't know what the previous article was about George Lo uh, Floyd. I don't know what that was, uh, what was actually mentioned in there that made them be the, that was the catalyst right. for, for what well, he changed his thinking. So, hold that, but why? What do you think is going well, through Well, that's what head? I'm saying. I, you know, if whatever, that's part of it. But knowing him and my experience with him, he's not very social. He doesn't engage in, in conversations with people of color. I, I tried. I watch other people. He just doesn't. You know, I had an issue with AVN. I tried to address it to him personally because I like I love the, you know, me. I'm not going to text you or hide behind a phone call. I'm going to come see you. So I, that's the approach. But he did not. He did everything to avoid me. So that's why when I read this statement, you're admitting to your these views and these ideas, but you wouldn't you wouldn't even have a conversation a month ago, two months ago, not even a year ago, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't engage this type of thinking. So that's where it came real permanent to me. Like, yeah, this guy's just jumping on the bandwagon. Right, right. <laughs> okay. Do you think now, and you were kind of saying it already, mm -hmm. you almost said like no way in hell. Mm -hmm. You were kind of, you know, <laughs> right. saying, right? Or pointing towards, will they be fair? You know, in the voting now for the people, the performers who win the awards, you know, will, mm -hmm. it, will interracial scenes now be not looked in the same and all the white on white will be more favored? Will, will they be biased, mm -hmm. the voters now? They're even Since afraid to even point it out. Oh, that didn't happen. Yeah. Or, or <laughs> I mean, it's, it's cold right. in the other direction. Or, or will they be like, no, we feel obligated. You know, so this is a strange... So who would like well, to answer that? If if I I'll, I'll approach it first. If 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 they if it's awarding out of if it's acknowledgement based on a feeling of obligation, I think that would become very very transparent and people will see it as such. Right. Like oh that person they're just doing that because now no. they have to hand out a few awards to black people or people of color. Um, you know. So is it going to change anything for the better? I can I, I honestly can't see how you can extinguish a flame that burned to enlighten the performance of a specific group and that be something positive. I like it. I don't think awards categories are racist in their own existence just by having a category. That's ah. it's not a racist thing. It's a category of something that happens. It's reality. Oh, it's oh you know what? Not to control Michael, but to to, to to certainly to piggyback off that is um, is it not a case of saying, hey, wait, what you were saying that a, ca a, a, a category as ra it's not racist as it stands on its own. Having mm -hmm. different categories to award in the porno business is it not a racist thing. I don't. I don't, I don't yeah. Yeah. I it's don't it's not that. because what you said earlier, because when you, it, it defines what it is. That's it. Right. 
I mean, that's yeah. And, no, no, no. and it you was, can make a racist movie. Well, well and the, the, the <laughs> right. specification you can, make, you can do that, and it's been done. The specification and the creation of these genres and micro micro genres and categories was born out of necessity. Let's not lose sight of that fact. Right. And I think that is an underlying truth that we are doing a disservice upon is that these categories were born out of necessity and the necessity has not been eradicated. This will serve to exponentiate the necessity for such. I don't even think it's going to come to be. Really, honestly. right? I, I don't I think it's, I, I, it's I, unrealistic. It's yeah, not, yeah. I don't even think he's going to be there. I don't. But I don't see that. That's a tough, that's a long <laughs> suggestion. That is a long <laughs> suggestion. But I'm simply saying, you know, we've agreed that if we submitted our ads, you know, and I haven't advertised in Amy for for years. But I'm saying, if I submitted an ad and they told if they rejected my ad, well, then, then, I would have a problem with that. Well, like, how would now you you're telling me that? How, I can, how are you going to reject? A black person's ad based on racism. Because if it says you made racial, the ad, right? Exactly. But how? But, if, uh, okay, like you can't be I, that. Now we are completely but, departing reality. Could, no, but let's be serious. This is a little. Let's be serious. I don't believe in my heart right. that a person that's in business to make money is going to say no, unless it's just outlandish. You know, and so I, well, I don't well, believe that. Okay, yeah, so yeah. you can tell me if, as long as the ad doesn't include the term interracial, right? But 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 here's the thing, Matt. Do you think the stores that's well, not I mean, DVDs, not really, but online there are inter. You think Pornhub is going to remove interracial? Uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Go to find it. Yeah. Hell to no, 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 right? No, but like, I mean, it's I, like so. Like, what do we do? What is, I think it's just the awards. They just get no, the award. No, 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 no. But to get They're to the award, you yeah. can't. Yeah. You can, they will not publicize your ad campaign yeah. if it includes. And I don't know whether is it just solely the term interracial. Really? Are you sure about that? I'm, I'm sure That's about that. It's, it's, it's right in there. It's right. Yeah. Okay. So my question is, if I if I advertise bro without using the term interracial, am oh. I still good? That sounds crazy. That's even crazy. It's even crazy. Because the store... Oh, God, now, it's fucking now, crazy. They just you know, went in the opposite direction. Because, what the you know, fuck? And, and, and it's earlier. actually racist to remove the category. It's fucking way if, racist. If no, I know. One way or the other. That, to me, when I read it, it was like... It's more... There you go. More racist. Thank you, you fucking... Yeah. Now, you, now, now you've finished the job. <laughs> you have finished the job. Right. right. It's right. the exact it's opposite. The, yeah. Well, on, a, on a side note, I was thinking it would be pretty funny if you don't, if you, the, the consumer is at home and all of a sudden there's a black person. He's like, what the fuck? Soon there's a black person in this. <laughs> Why didn't somebody yeah. tell me that shit? <laughs> Maybe they're programmed sometimes now. And then can we have, what about box covers? Like you're saying, you know, can we even... Uh, yeah, right. That gets, yeah, a box cover with a black person, and a white there's, girl, black man, white girl. Oh, that's yeah. against? No. It's, it's, yeah. it's, you know, what you call it in the beginning, you were like... Uh, Car, it was like the when we put the when, you, they, when they they put the uh, wood up on the on the windows. It was like you know because nervous. Yeah, it's just nervous. Me, this guy is extremely yeah. nervous. And here's the thing about it, and, and this is one of the things. And, 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 and you know, if if you are not consulting those that you are are considering you are in authority or in advisory there, thereof, then that is indeed racist. Because how do you make such a major decision without discussing or at least sharing it with other heavyweights that can weigh in on that? Now, 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 it doesn't have to be a black person per se. Maybe I'm not, they may not regard me and my commercial value to the industry as such. And I don't have a problem with that. But if I call my good friend Jules Jordan and I say, Jules, did anybody, did anybody at least run it by you? I don't know. I, that I think is fucked up. I, I, don't, I disagree. I believe that. They should have consulted somebody. Someone. Like you, of, of, a, a black man the four in the business. They should have consulted should have somebody. Or somebody with a lot of experience. Yeah. Who they, I don't know if they did, but they didn't call doesn't you. Doesn't sound like I, it. Doesn't read really like it. Yeah. That's why it's a nervous, kind of a poorly informed, reactionary decision. Yeah. yeah. If, 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 look, if, if, they, if the only people they asked were the people on their staff, then I think that that perhaps they should. Now, I don't know Rios. I don't, I've never met Mr. Rios. I, I don't know him. But I'm simply saying that. Well, I was going to add to that. Um, you know, their legal representation, you know them. You know him. Um, Federosi. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, he had to have consulted or, you know, maybe even projected some of his own views into that. 
because to protect him as a company, because mm-hmm. he refers to the company when he refers to his staff, he's going back to the company. He's, you know, it's like a, it's like for me, it was like a bunch of morsels in that thing. It was more his views. It was the views of the industry. It was the views of ABN and the views of his own entire staff. And, and then on top of all that, there's the legal repercussions or loopholes or, or exposure that comes from this. And knowing they're legal, receiving the, the you know, the, having the interaction I have with their, you know, with their, the legal representation showed me that that's, it's, Avian is also an extension of that thinking, which is racist. <laughs> so it's kind of like all of this was all in one press release and really kind of sudden and I but, think, but let me ask you. But it, but it provoked this type of discussion. You know what I mean? Like, valid. And what happens next? I think. Uh, is, okay. is but important. have we? Are we? Are we actually? Are we? Are we literally stepping farther into? You know, I I, I, won't, I would want to fall short from accusing Avian as being racist. I would like to take it up to the point of saying I think that that there could have been greater consideration from a broader. From the inclusion of broader perspectives, but if we determine that the people making these decisions aren't in a position to have the experience, then it gets back to the not listening, the misinformation, and so they react without consulting, you know, yeah, without right. anything. Right. What do I do? What do I do? You know, I'm afraid. I would. Can I ask Marcus what racism is all about? But that's the thing about it. Like, like, no one was. Con- there was anyway. no complaints. No and where's Shawn Michaels too? Did they call Shawn Michaels? I don't know, but 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 here's the thing, Matt. There was nothing. There was nothing that said that this industry had to remove the designation of a specific, albeit one of the most, or if not the most popular genre, right? I mean, you know, there was nothing that predicated that. There was nothing that's happened in this culture in the last month that would say this industry needed to make needed to make a transmogrification, a total change of consideration that would destroy. A genre, especially the, it, certainly in light of the creation of micro genres wow. like that proliferate at the last AVN versus major genres that exist in interracial being a major genre, the eradication of, of such is is ridiculous and and without without being properly vetted. I find it difficult for the companies to maybe support AVN. Right. Because if I can no longer advertise in right. that magazine the way I do seem fit to move my product, does AVN lose dollars? Check it out who I got. We got Dre on the phone. Yeah. So we want to ask Dre what, what up? is Alexa. <laughs> what up, what, what Marcus? Up, what up, brother? Hey, Dre. What's up, baby? How you doing, man? So we got Shawn Michaels. Really, the. IR specialist, really, in you my opinion, a big founder, the king, founder, <laughs> right? So, right. Dre, we got you online. We want, here we are. What do you think about the fact? You know, I mean, you're the advocate. Of, for, we all know you're the no color number lines. one advocate no color of interracial. No what do you think about them taking interracial out of the awards? And Lex says that they don't also will not allow you to have. Advertisement with interracial on it. That's what yep. I understand you're saying. Mm-hmm. Where, how do you feel about that? The no color lines mentality to, to this industry. Because being a young man growing up loving porn like any other person in the world, basically being experienced and, and you know, that first, wow, this is, this is incredible. This is, this is such an education. And, Seeing the racism attached to that, actually, once, actually, before I got into the business, I saw how some of the racism was being portrayed. Well, well Sean, not to cut right? you off, but, but Sean, Sean, not to cut you off, but cutting to the quick, I will ask you this. You being as one of the initial persons that took the existence of interracial to a level and a magnitude that we see it today, we are discussing the eradication of interracial as a specific genre identified on AVN magazine. Do you know How that? do you feel about a genre that you literally define and help create? How do you reply in the potential eradication of a specification you work so hard to perfect, hone, and bring into utter perfect existence? Right, right, 
first of all, hello, I miss you, love you. No you doubt. To answer the question, I believe that we, we as a people have worked hard to, to solidify a place in this industry and it, everything in our industry carries a label, just like most things in this world carries a label. Having said that, I'm in agreement with changing the genre name from interracial to something more appropriate, which if we look in our vernacular, there has to be something more appropriate than BBC and, 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 and IR, and, you know, because guess what, it, just, it was just thrown out there. There was no articulation behind it. There was no thought behind it. Well, I'm sure there was thought behind it, but not properly thought. That's my answer to that question. We're making a mistake, so that, that puts you at direct odds, certainly enough with myself, in terms of this regard, whereas I believe how, how you and I, as producers and directors, how are we to market our programs specifically? Now look, when we're selling to Hustler Video, we are vying for positioning amongst Brazzers or all the other companies that are putting out great product on, on be it Pornhub or on cable TV. Now, you mean to tell me that there is a betterment when my salesman is now disallowed or, dis or, 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 or encouraged to no longer identify my product by a specific name, and then he, if there's reference to be made to AVN to support that promotion of my product, and that product no longer has a place in AVN as specified for what it is, how does that become a betterment for our product sales? No, no, no. I, I completely disagree with that. But I'm saying, is how could there not be a better, is there not a better term? I, I find it not that there's a better term than interracial to identify most accurately the content of my product. <clears throat> well, at one point I was, well, at one point I was, I, I was. Go ahead, sorry. No, no, at one point I was advocating for the term multiracial. Right. I was just throwing that out there. <laughs> I, was just, <laughs> I, I just, I was just like. It's a hybrid. Right, I was like, shit, we're all kind of. Well, well, if you call it colored, then it's regressive. Right. right. So, absolutely, so absolutely. interracial, I think, was a title that uh, interracial as a as as a, look. I don't ex I don't expect this to rub uh, something that would rub white people the wrong way. This is something that that white people are saying. Hey, we're reflective, and we want to make sure we no longer offend, offend or disrespect right. our right. ethnic contingent. Right. But in regards to being a part of the ethnic contingent, I will wager that this will have a greater disservice to us, Sean, than is being considered by those that make those decisions. Okay, all right, I definitely see your point of view, my brother. But at the same time, I believe this is a moment in history where we can't take the moment and in time and correct this because it should not be a detriment to what we built this industry worldwide. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, when it comes to us as business people and entrepreneurs, there's, there's plenty of room, I feel, again, to recreate in an appropriate manner where they can't take away the IR uh, uh, genre just because it says, it because of the words. There's many other words to describe mm -hmm. IR in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And it should not be a detriment to us because it is being changed to something that Hopefully, it would be more appropriate. Well, change, changing the name, changing the name is 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 akin to simple semantics. Changing the name is just changing the word. Right. It still designates a specific, a specific, you know, you know, That's very true. thing or product or motive. What I'm saying is, if what they're doing is by eradicating the use of a title which specifically identifies this particular product as something other. That has been right. a detriment to the African American community historically yeah. in this country on a number of levels. And, and, and this is a reflection that would serve the, the ethnic community, uh, would serve an ill will to the ethnic community. If, even if not done on purpose, it will serve an ill will to the ethnic community because I will wager this. I believe that this will be, you know, this will probably usher in a period of, of the last you will see of ethnic representation on that stage. And, and, and being that I'm being that I'm, I'm, I'm retired, my last scene was February 2019. Sean, you and I performed my last scene, as a matter of fact. 
Remember in Vegas for legal porno? Yes, sir. That was my last scene. Thanks for having me be a part of that. No, dog. I mean, look, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm a product. I'm, I'm off your family tree, my dog. I'm no, off your mine. family tree. I will do everything in my power to make sure that the legacy that we built um, on our blood, sweat, and literal tears does not go uh, yeah. astray or aside because of a genre change of name, as you say, as semantics. Yeah. Much deeper than that, and um, it will be exposed like many other things being exposed as well before this is all said and done, in my opinion. Okay. Amen. Yeah, man. Wish you were here. Amen. And, amen. And I wish, hey, you know what? I miss all y'all. And, and I don't know how much I think about y'all. All y'all there, I think about y'all because I'm here because of y'all. No, that's the other way around, Dre. That is quite the opposite. It's the other way around. <laughs> yeah, like you hired Mike, who <laughs> <laughs> you know. I mean, I, I mean, hey, I give we're all connected, brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're all connected. Am, you feel me? But you hired Mike. I was your, I was your apprentice. You know, I served under. I was you were like I, I, was, I, was I served under Marcus's apprenticeship. <laughs> you know, saying it, 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 you you served under yeah, Sean's apprenticeship. Son, you know, it's like so. No, it's no, crazy. I love like y'all, man. Especially right now, you know. I love y'all. All right, Dre. Right, right, Thanks, Dre. Love you too, man. All right, bro. All right, Dre. Hit you up. All right, man. All right, Sean. Right, right, Thank you. Peace. 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 That was a good idea, Colin. You know what? To me, it seems a little bit like along the line here. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. Is are people losing their identity? So, not Dre, but just people in general. You know, with this type of idea. Will that? Will you lose your identity with that? What do you think? I'm not. I'm not. I'm no, no, not, not you. But I mean, the idea of this interracial being gone. Does the identity? Everybody's gonna blur together. If it was me, I would have asked more. What input right. are your experiences and change? If you want to help, if this is serious to you, I wouldn't have changed a, a designation of a category. I would have reached out to black performers and said, "What are the cha- what is your experience? What is the challenge you face? What is wrong with this industry from your point of view? I'm here to listen because I don't know. I don't walk in those shoes. So even if I've been around and seen, well, that was fucked up, it's not my reality. So therefore, how am I to decide how to address a reality that is not mine? If right? you're going to help. If I'm going to help. And I believe that many, many people want to help. Look, you walk around in a certain world, then you see something happen. The, look, there probably isn't a day, a week, a month that goes by in this country without some dude getting the George, George Floyd treatment. This has been going on forever, right? Forever. And nobody's fucking listening, right? In Minneapolis, I just saw a news report that every ser- uh, case that came before the, uh, you know, made it to court, a cop killed somebody. Only there was only one conviction. It was a black cop that killed a white lady, huh. yeah, right? That's not right there. So, through a lack of listening, there's a lack of questions asked. And if you don't ask questions and you don't inform yourself, then you're not going to solve a goddamn thing. You're going to remain uninformed. And then you're going to solve it from a point of view that doesn't even involve the experience. A bias. Right? Blind. Because we walk around with privilege. That's a fact. Okay? That's a fact. There's a different set of rules, right? It's not fair, but that's a fact. So therefore, if you don't like that, that as a white person, then ask. And don't be afraid to ask. And then you might actually change something or help if you're even capable. Now you are being informed. Now you're hearing something. If Lex would have got a phone call, right, then that guy would have had a chance to be educated. Right. When he's doing it all in Or market or whoever. But instead, there's resistance to communication. All, all the different forms of division lead to misinformation, misunderstanding. You know, I can sit here and say, oh, those movies where they got the guys and the watermelons and they're yeah. depicting negative racial stereotypes and they're making it look like it's a bad thing or blah, 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 blah. I never hired either of you based on skin color. Like it's on performance and chemistry and heat and the kind of scenes I know I'm going to get, what kind of movie I'm going to wind up with. 
and the heat and the passion. Yeah. Like Lex would have won those awards if he was a white guy. His performances were unbelievable for year after year. Yeah, but maybe, no, maybe I wouldn't have. Maybe you wouldn't Because have. if I wouldn't have, then I would have been directly compared and competing with Manuel Rocco yeah, you're, um, you're, and, and Nacho. Your, your performance is no less caliber than certainly enough. The but guys. but it but it bears what what the point being would be. I would wager to say that because I was black, I of I was of service and utility to such a great number of companies that were now shooting a burgeoning genre, which was interracial. So my being a component of that was where we see the viability that can be something that best. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so had I been a white guy, I would have only been working within the white companies because as we know, as we spoke of earlier, you, you know, interracial is primarily defined as black guy, it's a white female. So had I been a white guy, I might not have been doing as much interracial because some of the greatest white male performers rarely do interracial. We won't even talk about why that is. Really? Well, let, let me just throw that in there. I mean, you, uh, as the greatest, you're, okay, so TT, you're regarded as the greatest American of all time. You didn't have a problem with it, but that's, that's you're Latino. Does anybody know that? Look at me. <laughs> you know that, and you never had a problem with it as a producer or director. <laughs> wait, wait, but I'm just going to say that after, like I said before, after when I started doing all the black girls, later on I was alienated by, let's say, some white fans, mm. right? A, B, never. And I did all oh, such beautiful scenes with the girls, the black girls, you know, that I was going crazy for, right? And never once. And we're talking my power and passion. Never once. Did they say, for, th for my company, oh, that scene is great. Let's nominate it. I can guarantee you that I did scenes for other companies. I was nominated all the time for all the other companies. But, you know, for, for, the, own, for me, yeah. fucking working with the black girls, never did I get one ounce of respect ever. Which, what does that mean? I don't know. Ah, I, I know exactly what it means. Yeah. Right, you're saying that, so I just brought that in. Yeah. No, no. I, I mean, look, if you look at, you know, what historically from, you know, this is from a business standpoint, commercial standpoint, if you, if you, if you factor in the, that the, the overall uh, pervasive opinion is that black female talent does not garner enough, uh, enough fan base <laughs> to, to warrant giving um, greater budgets to, and then thereby any movies that are, are promoted as with black women as primary characters, they're afforded lesser budgets. Self-fulfilling prophecy will dictate if you give a lesser budget to a movie that's going to underperform in the marketplace. So when it comes back as an under, underperforming title, you can actually reflect upon the fact that you offered it less of a budget and thereby hamstrung the producer and director in asking him to produce a better product with less money. Now, if that movie was was based on the existence of a female, a black female talent as its primary promotional campaign, the carry of that campaign, then it's a self fulfilling prophecy. See what I'm saying? And then you find yourself saying, <laughs> "If I cast black women, can I make my money back?" But you afforded that production less money because. You felt that you wouldn't get the money back. You don't get the money back unless you put the money in. <clears throat> let's let's ask this question, okay? We've been around a long time, right? In this business, like I say, I've been around five decades, right? Do you ever? Huh? No, but five decades. The eighties, nineties, you know, thousands. This is the twenties, and that's five decades now. I've been around. And I'm part of the business still because I'm doing these interviews. So that's not 50 years. And you still moves in the marketplace. Right. So my moves are still there. So it's sure, five decades yeah. I'm part of, you know. No, I know. You yeah. know, I mean. Yeah. Not a complete five decades, but five decades. Mm -hmm. So in our experience, right, you know, do you ever, ever really think that, I mean, we're talking about the AVN now. But almost in general with the other organizations. But mo we're going AVN right now. Do you think they ever had respect, true respect for a black product? 
at one point I was thinking of some made me think of video team and, 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 you know, their input with AVN, um, um, West Coast Productions, which did hardly did any business really with some, but not a lot with AVN. Um, it was just, you know, there was missing from the conversation. You know, this decision was made without the conversation. The conversation that we're having now, the conversation that AVN is going to have later this week. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's after the fact, you know, you put out the statement and then, oh, well, maybe we should find out how they feel about this. <laughs> it's just, it, you know, it's just, you know, it, over time I've seen us like kind of marginalized, you know, excluded from the, from the input, you know what I mean? Pushed out, you know, not not part of the conversation. And, and maybe there's been certain performers and certain factions that had some say at the table, but where they listened to, where they was, would, would think the things change because of what their input was? I don't know. I, I don't know. I tried to have it recently and didn't, couldn't have it. And when I look at the representation and I look at what's out there, I don't see us as business owners, you know, at the table saying, hey, you know, we don't agree with that. Well, it just happened, so you definitely weren't called, right? And, right. I mean, oh, yeah. and I'm not expecting a phone call. I mean, okay. I, I emailed the motherfucker. You know what I mean? I mean, if that's the way you want to well, function. Well, well, well here's the thing, the, but, the converse of that is this. For There are those that, that weren't that phone call that didn't get it. And the question is then raised, is the absence of the, the attempt to contact those whose opinions matter, is the absence of that contact is that the affront that we need to worry about? Is that the exclusion that we are talking about yes. when we talk about the disenfranchisement of the African-American in most corporate and commercial environments in this country? I mean, certainly enough, if you reward That's a, 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 a one or two people within a contingent um, and expect the whole contingent to be satisfied right. because one person got the award <laughs> does not mean that there's a service to that contingent. See what I'm saying? So in terms of this, and we can disagree. I mean, brothers yeah. disagree. We, I, I was, you know, we don't all, we're not all on the same page. You, we just got a phone call. Sean, it's like, hey, this is how I feel about it. But that the leads to consultation. Well, the right. answer to his question, the is there a new normal that's being introduced? And is Hope not. the introduction of that new normal, does it come from a genuine place? Or does it come from a misguided, underinformed? What would be the place? mentality of not asking? What would be behind not even thinking to ask? Uh, Tell me. This well, guy. I mean, come on. Think about that for a second, because what would you naturally do if you were going to make a decision that affected somebody? Especially somebody. I, would, I want to speak to somebody. Yeah. And, we, and we already do that. Ask. And we do that. We talk about a lot of things. Uh, how, but let, let's get real. How can it be <laughs> genuine, Lex, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if it's made in a split second after... You know, when I produced black product for 20 years, and all of a sudden, oh, we have respect and love and appreciation. <laughs> Let's be, I mean, genuinely, is, is it just open the eyes more now? Is then it, it's going to build well, what's going to happen? We respect it happen? so much, we won't speak. I, I mean, I, I think that, you know, once you, you won't get, know until we tell you. <laughs> you know, as a person, like I said earlier, has benefited profoundly from, from avian support. Um, I, I, I do, I, I go right up to the line of saying that they are a proponent of, of, you know, of a, of a racist regime in any way. I don't know the current owners. My owner for avian will, will my owner emeritus, if you will, will be uh, Paul Fishbein because he was creator of the magazine and what he did really was in line with, certainly enough, his leadership today um, would be applicable, in my opinion. Um, not taking anything away from the current leadership that I don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm still be saying in this new normal, if there's a new normal that has been created, then does that dictate that we need another name for, what is that new, new name going to be? Huh. And, you know what I'm saying? And, and if you take away the current designation, then you are doing the opposite in effect. And I agree with you. I don't see, really, I don't think the regime is racist. No. I wouldn't no, think, it doesn't make sense to me. What? But, you know, I, I don't I, think I don't anybody really said that. Yeah. More like right. that 
No, but this... The respect. Yeah. The lack of knowledge, the lack of knowing what to do, yeah. the nervousness, the discomfort with it, whatever. Well, and this kind fact, of shit's not comfortable for people. Right. Well, and in fact, that he even says in his own thing, like, hey, we've done some things in the past that we're not yeah. proud of. The so, mission. Of yeah, it was on a mission. So mm -hmm. now, 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 one thing too, I want to, I do want to bring up and as a point of interest before we get, you know, even further. There is a, a marked difference in bigotry versus. Uh, racism, and perhaps um, the term eradicating the racial may be a, a reflection upon a feeling of a bigoted perspective. And then from that perspective, they felt it warranted to, to exclude the use of that term. Right. But the fact that they went all with the fact that they committed to discontinuing the use of that term, that is where this possibly borders or or, or, or extends into the realm of racism. Now, for those that are wondering how I come to that correlation, we'll define um, racism versus bigotry in and of itself as what? Bigotry would be most essentially a dislike for someone other than yourself. Racism would be most easily defined as the ability to exercise your dislike for another person. See what I'm saying? If you have the authority. So in that case, the right. bigoted statement might be the bigot. The bigoted thing might be like, "Oh, there are no black people to consult." The racial aspect of it might be the fact that now we're going to remove the title, and the imprint will be the eradication of those that benefit from the commercial shelter that that title provides. That's where it becomes a question of racism, and that's where they fail. Commercial opportunity. Hmm? The commercial opportunity. Well, the evaporation of commercial viability. Opportunity will persist, but viability will be eradicated. Because if you put the, the, the small amount of interracial movies that are put out there in terms of percentage wise, mm -hmm. well, if you put that into the greater pool, now those that smaller number has to compete against a greater number. See what I'm saying? And you will see a, a, a consuming of the, the interracial genre within the greater genre, well, the, thereby eradicating its viability. Well, I, I would look, if I was x -biz, I would be like, well, we're putting interracial on everything, <laughs> and shit, it just, to, just to counter it, just to pick up the market share that yeah. they're putting Why is down. this a new norm? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. It is, it, you know, I, like I said, I fall short in stepping on toes over there, but, but you know. Okay. You brought up one point. I stepped on toes. Did you? Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I don't know about me, but anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, like you brought up one point, you know, that European girls, mostly Europeans, come to America sometimes, or when, you know, American, black American performers mm -hmm. go to Europe and they work together, mm -hmm. you were stating they don't even understand what interracial really means. Mm -hmm. You well, okay, look, you know, um, when I started in this business, um, the three of us began traveling around the world, literally. These um, three? The three of us, with Anna Buck, we had a line that, that Mike uh, produced and directed called, uh, formerly of our friend Shawn Michaels. Um, Mike assumed the helm of Up Your Ass, which was one of the most powerful, well, arguably the, the most powerful interracial um, series of all time. See what I'm saying? Especially, you know, like, if you look at the, the talent that we, you know, in, in long story short, everywhere we went, when Mike would cast, and Mike, you'll elaborate on this, um, it was just a matter of booking male talent when we were on the road. Yeah. See what I'm saying? And then if you look at the fact when girls come here, the European, the Euro performers, it's not till they come here that someone asks them, do they do interracial? And then that girl is then made to understand what that means. Do you do black guys? Right. Like we would confidently travel to countries that don't even have porn, like Costa Rica, yeah. Chile. We Dominican would travel Republic, places that don't have black Mexico. people. Right. I mean, Whatever. literally, we know that the, it would be to that girl. Her only question would be, how many guys yeah. am I working? But we with also yeah. created our own reality in a lot of ways. So we created the feeling, the vibe, the caliber, and as a team. It's like a good bunch of guys that get together and form a band and they just kill it. We have that dynamic. Right. And when you have that kind of dynamic, it's unmistakable. So we come and we're ready to do this. People want to be a part of that kind of thing. You know, we're, 
we're, you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. just unmistakable. And we, we did those kinds of things. Now, what you're talking about is traveling to countries where the mentality just simply doesn't exist. Yeah. Right. It's not part of the deal. Right. Yeah. Right. They're not, they, they don't. So yeah, and if he didn't, if, the, if you sensed decided, that, we wouldn't even include him into the process. Nothing we, 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 right. <laughs> we're not, we we're not, go, we're, we're, this is like us. That, right. You know what I mean? We're not here to bend or do, you know, yeah. we're not getting off track here. We're not compromising. Yeah. We're not interested in anything like that. Right. Well, well, I will say to this, you know, to that end, you know, uh, of course, Marcus and I have been, um, you know, we, you know, we certainly have, with all due respect, we, we date interracially. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and in dating, it, it teaches people ways you as well, dating interracially. So you, you come to the understanding that, um, you know, girls from the United States um, have they, they, their understanding of the his, historic, you know, stains that America has, and the European performers didn't have that. So when we would, you know, work with these girls, um, and they would be working on our turf here in America, they wouldn't have a problem with it. So if they don't have a problem with it, why would it be an issue? Now I fully understand certain chicks have preferences. their personal preferences or issues, and that was never a problem. I'm simply saying that um, there is a truth to that. It doesn't have to be an issue. It doesn't have to be an issue because there's a contingent of performers that know not an issue of working with a black male. Yeah. Yeah. We're winding this up. Is there anything any of you want to add to this? I, I mean, what do you call an Oreo cookie? An interracial cookie? <laughs> <laughs> a black and white? <laughs> like, the, like the black and white cookie with Sam chocolate? Right. A DP? I don't know. <laughs> what do you call it? I, I, I mean, I'm joking because, you know, this is, this is a heavy thing. I, like I say, I feel like I don't even think he's going to be there as CEO much longer. I think people within the business are going to, you know, kind of do what they want. They always have. Yeah. We we always have. You know, we we, we find ways around issues in this business. Um, you know, and pretty much that drives the industry too. These these views, some of these things we incorporate into the movies. I mean, different producers and different companies want different things because this consumer is saying, "I want different things." So I I see this as like a great opportunity to discuss things on a bigger scale. Uh, George Floyd has got the the country, the world, you know, reevaluating their 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 approaches to different uh, races. Uh, but having this conversation within the business, within the industry, I'm I welcome it. I'm glad you're doing it. I'm glad I'm sitting here with some friends, but also some coworkers and some people who or who, like you said, are have over a almost 100 years experience. And we all bring in something different, a different perspective, but the discussion is the same. So I would not I would like to see it continue. I would like to see bringing company owners, female voices, you know, the, the, the buyers on the end, how are they gonna, you know, what are they looking for, what they like to see. And I'd like to see us just continue to make what we like to, what we wanna see, you know, cause that's part of it too. We, we like, we make what we wanna see. <laughs> <laughs> we made some beautiful stuff. We made some awesome <laughs> shit. When you, when you reflect back and think about some of the scenes, some of the girls, for me it's the girls, right? For you it's the girls, for you it's the girls, for you it's the girls, I think, right? You say, oh my God, it's beautiful, right? It is. Right. Would you like to add anything to that? One time we were in the Dominican Republic and Lex was dying to work with this chick for I don't know how fucking long, right? So finally the day comes and we're on this like balcony, but it's a second story and then there's a big opening. And there's a wall, like, I don't know, we're over there, and there's a wall here. And he's, you know, he's, do the yet lax fire, but he's just going nuts, and then it's time to pop me. Ah! <laughs> Misses the girl completely, right? Splatters the fucking wall, and it's way up there, right? <laughs> so it's like two stories up on this kind of wall across the way. Right, right. The next day, we're like, you know, we forget about it. The next day, there's a trail of ants. Oh, oh shit! That's funny. So that's off topic, but I just thought of that while I was sitting here looking at him. I'm like, I remember the time you fed the ants in the Dominican Republic. Hey, those ants in South America. And those ants in South those America. Big. Come, come eat some, some come eat ants down here. Really cool. uh, I can't remember the name of the girl. Uh, but we had some difficult ones on that trip. 
Not like uh, Budapest was the best of the uh, was stink, the stinky pool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, that, was, that was dead. That, yeah, that was an epic trip. Classic one, just sitting and telling porno stories. Yeah. Those trips. Well, let's <laughs> let's move on to you. Like anything else you'd like to add? Um, you know, I think um, what has brought us here today is that uh, um, America has um, uh, um, reared a part of itself that. Um, needs addressing and we need to look very closely at what we can do um, in light of the loss of a, of a life. Um, hopefully there's some positivity that will ultimately come of that. In terms of its impact on pornography, evidently there are those who are powers that be that want to use this as a moment for a sea change as such. I do think that, it, you know, while appreciated, I think that greater consideration um, needs to be applied because I think that we can get the solutions, but I don't think that we make an addition by subtraction. I like it. And I appreciate you guys coming down, taking the time, spending with me. No problem, bro. And this is TT Boy TV out. Everybody say goodbye. I'm down. Peace. Right, Talk peace. to people and ask questions. It's all right. And listen. And listen. It's okay to listen. Don't be afraid. We out. <laughs>